S is green purple ironclad. It's kind of a weird one. Um, I have to admit I don't have a ton of hope for this combo. Um, the purple modifier is not super good because you get a lot of uh, like obviously watcher super good, but a lot of the watcher power is invested in the watcher starting deck, which you don't get. Um, and uh, so subsequently, you get a lot of like stance changing cards, which are awkward to use. Um, yeah, so we'll have to maybe if we get like a um, pressure point on turn one, we can like get a headbutt. Um, try to do that thing. Let's see what happens. Uh, also, I'm going to finish my tea really quick so I can drink it. Okay, so we're in Ironclad, so we can kind of handle some early Elites. Probably don't want to take the Mega Elite, though. So it looks like we're restricted to a 2 Elite um, path here through Act 1. Um, kind of probably don't want to go right, because we're if we want to go to this Elite, we have to go to two shops to get there. Um, so the only other 2 Elite path is this one, um, which looks kind of difficult. Um, if we assume that one of these question marks is a fight, then we will have used our three easy pool fights. Uh, the second elite is dodgeable, we can go to this question mark instead. Uh, if we don't feel up to taking two elites, we can get a nice little fire elite fire path. Maybe we should just aim for that. Um, it's possible if we take this fire elite fire path and we're strong enough to take the mega elite. I always think that and then I always die to an act one mega elite. But I think left is the, is the way, we'll, we'll know more when we're here. Okay, um, I will leave him at four because we're going to be weak next turn, so four is how much damage we strike will do. And we take five, hopefully taking only five in the fight, healing for one. It's all coming together. Master plan. Okay, we healed for one. Cultist potion on floor one, well that definitely makes us feel strong. Whirlwind is also great. Two X cost cards on floor one. We could probably take Whirlwind over Skewer. Um, hmm. Hexaghost. I mean, Skewer does do more damage. The Skewer is more efficient than a strike right away, which is not true about Whirlwind. Maybe we just take Skewer. Whirlwind solves, like, a big problem, though, which is, like, Act 1 hard pool fights, the gang fights. I think I'm going to go for the skewer though. We also have access to some uh, energy manipulation through Watcher. So if we take either of these X cost things, and we're definitely taking one of the two X cost things, because these are the attacks that are available to us, um, then the Watcher's energy manipulation gets better. Uh, and the energy manipulation primarily comes from stance changing, uh, but there are some some explicitly energy-centric cards like Diva Form. You go for Skewer. Ooh, okay. So this says maybe we do want to go this way, because we get an extra relic um, from here. We've got a lot of health to burn, so let's go for it. Ooh, wow. <laughs> First shot. We won the 25%. That's unlikely. Uh, we can either do 21 damage and take 12, or we can block for either 5 or 10, and do either 14 or 7. I think I can block for 10, do 7. It's certainly the most boring approach, but I don't like taking damage. Set up vulnerable, block for 5, seems fine. Uh, if we draw Skewer, we might have had lethal there. I didn't calculate it, but... 
just thinking about it. It was almost certainly lethal. Ten times three, yes it is. So we healed for four in that fight, which is great. Um, all defensive options. Disarm is quite good against Hexaghost. Um, Armaments was the hero of our Searing Blow deck over the weekend. But we haven't found Searing Blow, so... Armaments isn't a hero yet. Plus we have Regal Pillow, so we're, um... We're already leaning away from Searing Blow stuff, because we have a good use for a campsite. Um, we take Empty Body. It's the biggest block card available here. Um, and, uh, if we find a Stance Enter, then we can start doing some stance stancy stuff. Stancy stuff is good because we have, um, an X-Cost card. It also is just a one mono block for seven, which is, you know, a little bit below rate for a card that you would put in the deck, but it's better than a Defend. Um, our potions are also absolutely insane, so we could probably handle the two elite path here. Um, so we got to reach into the, the ooze and take the two elite path, probably. Maybe even still take the mega elite. Um, I think if we're trying to do all that, we probably want disarm. Um, actually, disarm isn't particularly good in most of the elite fights. It's good against Lagavulin, but pretty much just Lagavulin. I think I'll take Empty Body, just to have a block card. Pink Bottle, okay. And we did get a fight in the um, question mark pool. So we're getting all three uh, card awards here. Prior to our first elite. Hoping to redraw a Skewer. This is not lethal, we're off by three. Um, but we could block out. And yeah, probably set up Lethal next turn. Yes, indeed. Okay, you feeling pretty strong. Got some. Got a Dagger Spray, which is great. Um, get that AoE that we missed on not picking the Whirlwind. I'm pretty happy to grab that prior to our first Elite. Um, yeah, I think we're going up the middle. We don't have a ton of money for the shop. Um, but we're getting basically no value out of these campfires. We like we would smith at the first one, maybe take dagger spray or skewer, I guess. Those are some pretty decent picks. Hmm. So we get two relics and we spend more health, and we get to go to a shop with 100. And, I guess probably about 180 gold, so we might get a shop relic too. Um, but then we might lose a bunch of health. Or we get an upgrade, and then maybe have to rest here. So we're basically at full health coming out of here. Um, maybe get two upgrades in a relic. So we're getting at least one relic either way. So how good is this second relic and uh, shop compared to maybe two upgrades? Shop and a relic versus two upgrades. Hmm. Well, a relic is better than an upgrade most of the time. That's like the shovel equivalency, right? Um, and is a shop better than? I think a, a shop might actually have like negative value because we are going into a shop with 150 gold, so we're making kind of an inefficient use out of that floor. So the shop is worse than the upgrade, and the relic is better. Which doesn't tell us anything. If they were both better or both worse, then we would have our answer, but we, they're not. Okay, so is the amount that a shop is worse than an upgrade larger in magnitude or smaller in magnitude than the amount that a extra relic is um, better than an upgrade? And um, how do the choices affect this? Because here we can choose to either upgrade or rest, and here we can choose to either fight the elite or take a question mark. This is a really complicated decision. I have no idea how to make this. Um, 
I think that in general, I've been having a lot of trouble with these combination um, runs. I haven't won any of them yet. Um, so we should take a high variance route since we seem to be strong right now. Um, so we should try and push that advantage. Um, and I think the route that gives us the largest upside is getting two relics and a shop. So I'm gonna go right. Do we drink the Cultist Potion at this fight or the next fight? I think probably this fight. Um, it makes Dagger Spray like really good. Especially if we don't draw Dagger Spray next turn, but we get it the turn after. Um, we're probably playing two cards this turn, probably Empty Body and Skewer. So we might actually draw Dagger Spray, which would be really unfortunate. One in nine chance of that happening. So we're going to play those two cards, and then we're going to decide on this, the Cultist Potion. Cultist Potion doesn't do anything this turn. Um, so if we don't draw Dagger Spray, I think I will drink the Cultist Potion. And if we drew do, do draw a Dagger Spray, probably won't drink the Cultist Potion. And we'll probably plan on drinking the Regen Pot instead. Okay, we did not draw it, so I think I will drink the Cultist Potion. All right, we managed to dodge uh, Dagger Spray, so we're going to get two Strength on it. Just need to focus on blocking this turn. Uh, two Strength Dagger Spray is going to be eight or six to all twice. So that's twelve to all. Um, we're not close to killing that Sentry yet. Maybe I was supposed to drink both potions here. Um, so we can Dagger Spray and Strike to kill back Sentry and then strike somebody else. Um, if we strike the front guy, we're gonna have plus three strength next turn, and he's gonna be at 24. So if we find three strikes, we do 27 and kill him. Um, or if we find Skewer, we kill him. Uh, so Skewer is approximately one in I'm going to call it 1 in 4. Um, it's higher than that, but... And then 3 strikes is very unlikely. So I think we're going to go for back sentry. He's got lower health, and uh, we've got an extra turn to get, get him. Um, from that perspective, if we're going... If we're trying to kill him in 2 turns, and then him after that, we probably do have enough time for regen pot to be effective, so I think I'll drink that too. Regen pot's pretty good in this fight. Hi, Sir Edible. How's it going? I didn't mean to disrupt your lurking by asking you a question. It's just sort of reflexive. It's a greeting. <laughs> um, okay, we only need 10 block this turn. Unfortunately, we got extra. Play the extra card to charge the pendant. Or the, not the pendant, ink bottle. They both count up to 10, so they must be the same thing, right? Um. We have Guaranteed Skewer next turn, which is lethal on um, front sentry. Um, we could not take it and get the two healing, but I don't think we're that greedy. Um, yeah. Do Voo Doll. Uh, Twin Strike has Strength Scaling. This is Strength Scaling. Uh, I'd prefer a Sword Boomerang, obviously. The Twin Strike is okay. And we find that one-third as many Sword Boomerangs since we have these modifiers. Uh, also, one-third as many Heavy Blades. One-third as many Pummels. That kind of stuff. Uh, there is some Silent Strength Scaling stuff and some Watcher Strength Scaling stuff. So there's Ragnarok and... Um, um, what's it called? Riddle with holes. There's a bunch of them. Um, shivs. Uh, backstab is great. Backstab's like a much better card than Twin Slice. In general. We already take, took one defensive card, and we have another, um, elite fight here in a second. Um, backstab is like, it's good against, uh, Gremlin Knob, and kind of bad against Logavulin. Um, it's not like really bad against Logavulin, but it's a little bit bad. It just says you have to start on turn one, basically. 
It's good like one third of the time when we have Bash in our starting hand. Yeah, I think we should take backstab. I'm pretty happy with that. Okay. Um, second shot at Dagger Spray would be an Apotheosis deck. Oh, just kidding. We don't have the money for that. Um, we're not gonna. We're see, gonna see one third as much scrying as normal, so that's probably not correct. There's an Art of War available. Um, energy relics are good because we have an X cost card. We did take kind of an early defensive card, so it's possible we could pull off Art of War. We can afford Art of War Dagger Spray, which seems pretty reasonable. We cannot afford Art of War Impatience, and those go very well together in the no attack deck. I'm not sure if a no attack deck is possible here. Um, Yeah, I think I just like Ardvor Dagger Spray. I guess the same cost is Orrery Dagger Spray. What cards could we find with Orrery that would really make the make the deck go? Could find like a Diva Form, um, or like stance changing stuff. Weirdly, I do feel like the um, the combo decks are pretty hungry for card rewards, um, because the the sort of the density the the um, the synergy packages are really um, sparsely distributed, because um, it's like, okay, so sometimes you get um, like uh, clockwork souvenir and flex, right? And so you're like really looking for flex, but you find one third as many flexes as normal when you're playing a three class deck, and you find one third as many. I guess I was already talking about the strength synergy cards being distributed just a second ago. So maybe Orrery's correct. Sometimes Orrery pays off huge, too. Orrery doesn't work very well with Duvudal. Duvudal says play attacks. Orrery says play skills. Or, uh, sorry, Art of War says play skills. Uh, so maybe we take Orrery and Dagger Spray. I think we're definitely taking Dagger Spray. Dagger Spray is really good. Strength scales... Um, solves some of the hard pool fights. Uh, and then one of these two. Let's let's take a shot with the orrery. Could be really good. Okay, we got shockwave flying knee drop kick, or uppercut fear no evil dual wield. Uh, sorry, let me think about each of these as I'm going through them. Flying Knee is really good because it's an attack and a skewer. Um, drop kick, we don't have any vulnerable synergies other than that Bash. And Shockwave is just a really good card. Um, the Hexaghost has some, some difficulties with Shockwave rounding. Um, so um, it tends to block for a lot in that fight. Um, Uppercut's a really standout great card. Uh, it's another source of weak, which has the same properties against um, Hexaghost, although it's way less consistent because Shockwave gives you three uh, stacks of it, um, so its uptime is much higher. Uh, Fear No Evil would be our first way of entering Calm, which would be great because we have an empty body, so we can get some extra value out of that. Uh, those two sort of combine to make energy for Skewer. Um, uh, dual wield is a, a really nice little combo piece. We don't really have a combo going, um, so we probably don't want dual wield. Uh, Riddle with Holes is uh, the aforementioned um, silent strength scaling card. Deus Ex Machina is a huge standout here um, because we have Skewer, so being able to get a bunch of energy and then hold on to it to whenever, for whenever the uh, Skewer turn is seems great. Um, uh, there's another copy of Empty Body, another shot at Shockwave, and uh, Expertise. Expertise is pretty interesting. Um, uh, I'm kind of still in the mode from the daily where I'm trying to play a bunch of cards because everyone has the slow modifier, but that's not true anymore. 
Um, there's an anger. Consecrate we don't really need. Uh, we've kind of solved all of our AoE problems with um, double dagger spray. Um, although both Consecrate and Anger are zero cost attacks, so that helps our Duvu doll um, set up. Um, Bloodletting is not a good card. It's probably flying me here. We could take Dropkick and then take this Shockwave. Um, get an extra source of Vulnerable. Uh, Dropkick is, is kind of decent with Duvudal. Gives you an extra attack for zero energy. Um, and then we could take the, the uppercut here. So we'd get like a whole bunch of vulnerable stuff. Keep people vulnerable. Probably, probably taking Deus Ex Machina from here. I don't, I don't see any reason to not do that. So let's just do that first. I think we're probably skipping this one. So this one, it's like either flying near drop kick. Um, this one, uppercut and fear no evil are both very strong. Um, this one, I think I'm probably skipping. We're taking a shockwave, maybe. And this one, I think, is a skip. Okay, so it's really just what are we doing with the first two? I think it's flying knee and um, uppercut. Um, maybe we do think of the shockwave too. So flying knee means that we can take a little bit more expensive stuff. Um, flying knee and Deus Ex Machina, we have a lot of energy manipulation. So that kind of says we should probably take the shockwave, huh? Uppercut is an expensive thing. All right, I think I'll take, grab the shockwave. Maybe that's a mistake. I think we feel strong enough to go to this elite, which has got a bunch of card wards. Um, well, this is exactly what I was talking about with the um, bash coming up in the starting hand, so that's really nice. Um, okay, let's get started. Um, Dagger Spray does 14 damage, Flying E does 13, but I get an energy next turn. Seems like one damage for one energy is a trade I would like to make. a skewer. We need to get that upgraded. Um, it does less damage per energy than Dagger Spray. So Dagger Spray does 14 and Skewer does 12. So Dagger Spray first. Uh, but we want to defend this turn. Um, could proc Ink Bottle with like defend Skill Pot and then if it's um, if it's Deus Ex Machina then um, we can Skewer for extra. I think I like that. Skill pot's probably getting used in this fight, so might as well be now. Uh, Ghostly Arbor seems fine. It, it was Deus Ex Machina. Okay, well, um, Skewer's about as good as we uh, as we get in terms of damage efficiency, so let's just pump it all in right now. It's possible we get lethal next turn. And yeah, we did. Great fight. Uh, there's the searing blood I was talking about. Uh, probably don't want that, or cleave, or like water. <laughs> so I think we're skipping here. I think these are all worse than skip significantly. Anchor's great. There's one of them pesky AoE fights. Um, Shockwave backstab kills any one of them. Um, so let's do that. Well, let's see. So this actually almost kills one, too. We're blocked out, so I guess if we backstab this front one, we avoid the weak, which seems nice. Cool. Good to finish the fight. Uh, we should probably charge Ink Bottle if we can. I'm satisfied with that level of ink bottle charging. Um, no to all these, I think. Uh, we haven't taken any strikes. So we probably shouldn't take perfected strike. Uh, we do have a bunch of expensive stuff. We could take setup. 
kind of a weird idea. Set up on uppercut or shockwave or bash. Now it's just so slow, requiring you to draw two cards to play setup. One of them is setup. One of them is the card you're playing setup on, and then requiring you to draw the, a third card uh, is just so expensive. Um, um, for the the it costs zero. Like okay, so let's let's put a cost on car drawing a card, right? And we could debate what that cost is, but let's say it's um, half an energy, right? I think that's a reasonable cost. So in order to get set up to go, you have to draw three cards, which costs you implicitly 1.5 energy, and then set up itself costs one. So you're paying 2.5 energy, roughly, to, um, to reduce the cost of a card in your hand by zero um, several turns later. Um, so it's like, uh, the, the cost of that card better be three, first of all, um, or there better be like a really good reason why you want it in the bottom of your deck. Uh, like maybe it's grand finale or something. Setup is, does work in grand finale decks. I don't want to give setup too much shit, but, um, <laughs> you're paying 2.5 energy to reduce the cost of a three cost card, presumably to zero. So you're like not really getting a discount, um, and then it takes a long time, so like, yikes. Um, yeah, I, I mean, you could play it on an Omniscience, I guess, with this combo, but um, there's not very many four cost cards. I think we are doing the Mega Elite. We have, um, we're really strong, and we have a bunch of cards, and we have Preserved Insect and like Anchor, so I think we can probably handle it. Um, and we need to need to get get juiced up. Um, there's no shop coming up, so we're gonna say no to the serpent. Sorry, serpent. All right, max HP um, sentries is great because we have preserved insect. So screw you guys. Um. Oh, curse does give me one strength. I did not consider that. Um, it was probably worth it. It makes you weak though, which is pretty bad. Um, I think we backstab and defend strike here. Well, obviously backstabbing. I think defend strike um, gives me a pretty good chance of killing that sentry next turn. Um, I just passed two damage for no reason. I was already blocked out. Got about anchor. Okay, so we can kill him with strike and then double defend. Feels bad to miss out on uppercut though. <laughs> yeah, well, happy to happy to provide some laughs. I won that. I won that daily at the beginning. I'm not sure if you saw that, uh, but dailies are pretty easy. Uh, so if we do 14 damage to him, he's at 13. We have actually an almost 100% chance of killing him next turn. Can we miss if our hand is Defend, Empty Body, Shockwave, Deus Ex Machina? Uh, that's only four cards. Uh, so it have to be a strike in there too. But I do think that does it. It fails to kill him. Although it also blocks out, so like, it's not that big of a deal. Also, we can't have that hand because then we play one card and then we draw another one and then that card kills him, so. Uh, maybe we kill him without this uppercut. Maybe we can just block out this turn and kill him next turn. Um, there's a lot fewer card hands that kill him from 27. We need like Deus Ex Machina and Skewer or Dagger Spray to get him. So I think I'll take the 14 damage while I have it. Uppercut is really strong. Alright, Dagger Spray Strike kills the front one. And then we could skewer the back one for eight. Should set up for lethal, right? Uh, yep. Cool, well that was a great fight. Uh, we like barely lost any health. Got our act one mega elite. Signature move, huh? Signature move is pretty bad with skewer, huh? 
Yeah, Eternal Feather's pretty nice. Maybe we should have taken that, um... Whatchamacallit? Um... The card that you can upgrade forever. Um, but we have Regal Pillow. I think a pretty reasonable argument for not taking it. Uh, Signature Move doesn't really strength scale. And we do have some strength scaling. Um, yeah, I think I'm not going to take it just because of its so awkward with Skewer. Yeah, Eternal Feather is super good. Anything that heals you. Um, meal Ticket. Um, even uh, Blood Vial. Um, Regal Pillow is uh, is kind of the weakest of the healing relics, which is crazy because it's so strong. Yeah, I think it's probably skip here. I just don't want to skip a signature move if I don't have to. Because um, it's so good when it's good. Can you imagine, like, Divinity Form signature move? Mm. It's like a damage cap turn. One card. Do we have any Body Slam synergy? Probably we don't. Yeah, we've only picked uh, one defensive card, and that's Empty Body. Prostrate. Probably going to have trouble going into Divinity Form. Uh, Divinity Form is a good friend of Strength Scaling, though. I think we skip here. Um, question Mark or Fight? I think, um, I think Question Mark. It's a chest. Get a free Toy Ornithopter or a Sapphire Key. Uh, Toy Ornithopter, another healing relic that is arguably better than Regal Pillow. You can decide when it happens. You don't have to waste your campsite on resting. Uh, we don't currently have any potions. And Toy Ornithopter does make Juzu, or Sozu quite a bit worse. Um, so maybe we should take Sapphire Key over it. I would be pretty happy with Sozu right now. Um, although, obviously, it's at its best when you have, you know, two Ghost Stone Jars or something. Um. Hmm. You said you were watching me in 4K earlier, but I'm pretty sure I don't broadcast in 4K. I'm my bitrate is 2,673 kilobytes a second, which I think is too low. Hmm. It's so good, but... So Sapphire Key. Yeah, I think we'll take it. It might save our life. It's hard to say right now. Okay. I'm pretty sure we could kill the Laos with Bash Backstab. Um, so that'd be 9 plus 18 is um, 27. He's at 26, yeah. Um, well, that seems fine. And then fit in a flying knee for some next turn energy. Uh, uppercut is less efficient than skewer, but it develops vulnerable. So the total damage from just skewer for four is 32. Um, with uppercut and skewer for two, it's 14 plus 12 times two. Which is 24 uh, plus 14 is 36, so that's lethal. Okay. It must be more because the other one wasn't lethal. Uh, it looks like it was too over lethal, so I must have done my math wrong somehow. Uh, escape plan is nice. We don't have a ton of, of skills though. If we take in that Art of War, escape plan would be like right up our alley, but we take. Orrery instead. Um, Warcry is a card that you don't normally have access to. It's good with Deus Ex Machina, weirdly, because you can, like, if you draw a Deus Ex Machina, you could put one miracle back on top. You get plus one energy. I think we skip here now. Alright, we're basically at full health, so let's upgrade a card. Uh, probably Uppercut. Uppercut's got a crazy upgrade. Uh, Skewer is nice up too, though. We're getting a lot of our damage through Skewer. Um, we need to increase our weak uptime, though, and uh, Uppercut does that. 
Uh, we're also going into Hexaghost with 72 health, which is, like, pretty scary. So that turn 2 attack is going to do what, like... Um, is it 6 times 6? Or is it... Maybe it's 7 times 6. Uh, suddenly I'm, I'm very afraid. Um, okay. Yeah, 7 times 6. We have no block. Um, what... <laughs> Getting hit for 42 right now. Okay. Not much we can do about it. Um, probably bash to set up some vulnerable. And then 14 damage versus 13. Oh, we've done this math before. I'll take the energy. Get just walloped. Brutal. Maybe we want to sh save this shockwave for when the... Um, when the weak is actually going to hit. But maybe we're planning on keeping him weak for forever. Uh, this uppercut is kind of poorly positioned for that plan. Because um, we're going to draw the uppercut and shuffle next turn. So we're going to... Uppercut is going to be out of the deck for the second shuffle. Um, so I think no shockwave this turn. Okay, clearly playing that, and, um, hmm, probably miracling something this turn. I think we're playing at least one defend, and then just take three, maybe? Yeah, I think we'll save the miracles for, um, vulnerable skewer. Uh, empty body blocks out, we can flying knee to get some energy next turn. Um, pretty reasonable argument that I should double Miracle out the strikes here. Uh, this is our last turn of Vulnerable. Um, so, uh, these do more damage than they would otherwise do. Uh, we also have some next turn energy, so holding on to the Miracles isn't super valuable. Um, I guess if we get Bash and Skewer on different turns, if we get Bash next turn and then Skewer the turn after, and it would be worth it to hold on to the, the Miracles. Actually, we have several sources of Vulnerable coming up. So I guess I'll hold the Miracles. We did get the Bash on the turn before the... Uh, the Witchina thingy. The skewer. So that worked out. Hmm. I think we can't skip uh, Shockwave this turn, though. Um, because it looks like we're not going to kill him before he um, he cycles around to the next big attack, and we need him to be weak during that attack, and he's weak on that attack if we shockwave him right now. He's also weak on that attack if we um, uppercut any turn except for next turn. Um, so we could try to walk that line, but that doesn't seem very safe. I think we just shockwave and probably double defend here. Yeah. A little sad that we didn't just play the skewer, but. Alright, Ink Pop is charged, so we can draw a card here. Um, so we're gonna play Empty Body this turn, so let's do that first. Uppercut is the card. Well, uh, Uppercut's really good, keeps him vulnerable and weak. Um. Dagger Spray is our highest damage card per energy, so we should Miracle out one of them. It's not getting any better than that. 14 damage. Ouch. Are we dead? 24. Yep. We died. Um, super promising run. I'm not sure how we didn't end up with enough damage against Hexaghost. I sort of thought we had it. Um, huh. Maybe we should have saved that cultist potion? What the hell happened? Maybe we should have taken that, um, that curse? 
Would have made us a little faster. Maybe I should have tried to race him and miracled out the uh, the skewer on that one turn. Maybe we needed to get an upgrade on the skewer. But I put it on uppercut instead. Maybe that was a mistake. This really felt like... Uh, I don't know if it was like a heart killer, but like we shouldn't have died to Hexaghost. I did something wrong. <laughs> 